Well, it has taken half a century, but NASA is one step closer to putting humans back on the moon after giving the go-ahead to the launch of a major test flight on Monday. Mission liftoff. NASA describes it as a historic moment that could pave the way for a new era of space exploration. Vehicle is pitching. Since the dawn of humanity, we have been fascinated by celestial objects. We have come a long way from worshipping them to finally landing on them. But the one thing we have realized from this long journey is that the more we learn the less we know about space and our universe. Despite the evolution of technology at an unprecedented rate, there is still a lot that we do not know about our universe. And the main reason for it is the distance between stars, plants, and our Earth. It takes about five to six months to reach Mars, which is one of the nearest planets to the Earth. Imagine how much time would it take to explore galaxies and planets that are far beyond our solar system. The distances are so long that we had to come up with a special unit for it, which is the light year. A light year is a distance that light travels in an earthly year, which is about 5.88 trillion miles. And the closest star to our solar system is Alpha Centauri, which is about 4.35 light years from Earth. To put things in perspective, light travels at a speed of 186,000 miles per second. It all comes down to the fact that if humanity wants to explore beyond its universe, it would at least have to reach a speed comparable to light. It is a very interesting discipline, and a lot of work has been done on it. The short answer? No, we cannot travel at the speed of light. We are all familiar with Einstein's famous theory of special relativity, which can be summarized in the equation E equals m to square. The challenge to reaching the speed of light is the energy required for it. Even for subatomic particles to reach near the speed of light, it takes immense energy which is near infinite. And as of now, we are not quite there yet. Providing an object as small as a proton with infinite energy still remains a challenge. No, because even if we are able to reach 1% of the speed of light, there is a lot we would be able to explore. And if you think 1% of the light speed is not fast enough, think again because that speed would take you from the west coast to the east coast of the United States in just a little over a second. By now you should know that the major hurdle to achieving the speed of light is the energy requirement. Hence, a major part of the research focuses on the techniques to either provide high energy or reduce the role of energy in achieving the speed of light. Several models have been proposed by scientists that are based on different principles to reach blistering speeds. The technology is patented and works by trapping microwaves in a triangular-shaped chamber. Bouncing of the microwaves in the chamber produces thrust, and because the chamber is closed, it neither needs an input nor releases an output. It is based on the principles of Newton's second law, which defines force as the rate of change in momentum. However, a group of scientists at the Dresden University of Technology decided to give it a try anyway. The results showed that thrust in the results concluded by NASA and some Chinese scientists were all false positive and could be explained by outside forces. In contrast to EM drive, the warp drive is quite promising and it has invited several scientists from around the world to work on it. Miguel Alcabier a Mexican mathematician was the first person to lay out a foundation for this model. It was known as Alcubierre warp drive, but back then it was not considered practical because it required extremely high volumes of energy and exotic material that does not even exist. It was the material that has not been observed in nature thus far. However, despite the shortcomings, the design of the initial warp drive was very intuitive. It would contract the space immediately in front of the traveling object and expand the space right behind it. Essentially, it could create a wave of curvature, which would take the object to its destination. Even within this design, several flaws were pointed out and multiple other variants were proposed. The most recent and improved model of the warp drive 
has been proposed by Dr. Eric Lentz, a renowned physicist with more than 10 years of experience in practical applications. Eric's solution is fundamentally different from all the other models that have been proposed. He pointed out that the warp bubble is not even necessary for the object to move in space. Eric quotes a solution proposed by Gyozin Atorio, which was published in 2002. The newly proposed model proves that expansion and contraction are not needed to travel the object into space. This discovery is a massive breakthrough because it reveals that exotic material needed to contract and expand the space is not even required anymore. Eric's theory is based on conventional physics, which makes it more practical and viable. The new model is geometrically different from the other model because it places the energy around the warp bubble differently. In the initial models and all those that were proposed afterwards, the energy densities and the curvature are separated. It essentially limits the energy to a small torus between the regions of high expansions and contractions. But Eric's model brings the energies together because the region of high expansion and contractions overlap each other. Typically, it takes decades for such a breakthrough to materialize. A classic example of it is black holes, which were proposed by an English astronomer, John Michel, in 1784, but we discovered them almost two and a half century later. But because of the pace of technology, the time required to materialize such research has been narrowed significantly. It is quite possible that some of us may witness a version of Eric's model traveling in space. Eric has proposed some solutions to make his idea practical, and it starts with reducing the energy requirement to a practical level. The physicist believes that it could be possible by using a modern-day fission reactor. Furthermore, while Eric's model is most viable at this point, some other scientists might introduce an even more efficient one. It is quite possible, considering the interest the scientific community has taken in warp drive models. With the advancement in technology, we might witness a testable model very soon. Now just take a moment and realize how far we have come. The materialization of this concept would be a massive breakthrough that would help us understand our universe better and in more depth. We hope this video was informative and fun. Stay connected with us to learn more about the breakthroughs in science and their implications for our lives. As always, we will see you in the next one.